Christ who did not belong. And besides that, we've been playmates of Bo and Joe, our next door neighbors, for as long as I can remember. The short supply of boys living in the area had raised our stock, and the younger brother Bo would even occasionally play house with me if no other boys were within range to find him out. <laughs> Beverly Jean bounded up to us, her blonde ponytail bouncing cheerily. I dug the toe of my tennis shoe into the dirt and scowled. Apparently, she had not been exposed to too many kids other than school because she had not learned how to approach the group with the right dose of cool. Her too obvious eagerness to play made us embarrassed for her. Beverly Jean would trespass, as we saw it, into the neighborhood to visit her grandparents, the Richards, who lived just behind and across the alley from the backyard that became our field of dreams. The Richards were a scary lot. Mister had a huge red hound of a face and let it be known that no kid except for his precious granddaughter would survive passage through his yard. The missus, as far as we knew, had never set foot on land. She was only sighted occasionally at the back screen door glaring at any kid who wandered within 50 yards of the house. Ensuring that the perimeters were never breached was Rex, the evil chow chow, who protected the property and struck fear into the hearts of anyone under the age of 30 by barking incessantly with hair down his back standing on end and exposing his satanic black tongue ringed with pointed yellow teeth. It never occurred to us that the chain that tethered Rex to the clothesline limited his reign of terror. We just knew he meant business and the point was well taken. Beverly Jean lived in some hinterland like Benton or Sherwood or some <laughs> other foreign location a good 15 or 20 miles away. And worst of all, more than once, she showed up in a dress. The greatest breach by Beverly Jean, as we saw it, was that she played, well, like a girl. I was a girl. My sister obviously was a girl. But we'd been taught the fundamentals by Daddy, who'd been a drill sergeant during WW2. So there was no room for girliness in our house when it came to playing sports, having hurt feelings, or accepting the application of mercurochrome or big sad to anything that might be skinned up or stopped up. For what she lacked in sports skills and social skills, Beverly Jean had a flair for the dramatic, which only heightened our view of her as a strange bird. Beverly Jean bounded up to the plate, took the bat, holding it way too high up with hands at least six inches apart. Then she launched into her chant, I'm going to choke up on this bat. I'm going to choke up on this bat. I'm going to choke up on this bat and hit me a home run. Then she swung up to down as if she were casting a fishing rod. Needless to say, this technique got her only three swift strikes and a lot of snickers to which she seemed oblivious. She slung the bat a good 20 yards and stomped back across the alley, sputtering some sort of sing-song kid cussing, slamming the screen door to her grandparents' house. If she could only hit the ball that far, or at all. When my time came to bed, I stepped up to the plate, took my stance first as a right-hander for the first pitch, and then, newly aware of switch hitters, batted next as a lefty. When you are left-handed in an all-right-handed family, you learn to do tasks the right way, but then pop back into what feels natural. My heart was racing and my hands were sweating. I had the added pressure of being not only a G-I-R-L, but the youngest of the bunch as well. The first pitch sailed by my shoulder, and I swung so hard I whacked myself in the back of the head with the bat. <laughs> Strike, the other team yelled way too long and way too loud. On the second pitch, I slammed the bat into the ball, sending it through the straggly yard, over the ditch, across Maryland Street, past the sidewalk, and over the open the outfielder had to run to the end of the fence to field the ball, buying me some time around the platinum cardboard box bases, and to arrive safe at home. I thought about poor Beverly Jean. 